All right, so thanks for joining me in today's video. What we're going to do is take a look at Foot Locker. Uh, Foot Locker continues to uh, trend down here after earnings, so there's been a bit of a struggle right now. And when we really look at uh, the stock here, as I, I pull it up, I'm gonna show you this chart. Uh, just take a look at all this stuff going down, and I would say, man, this thing has got a huge sell-off that's happening right now. And I would say uh, it could be a nightmare for <laughs> those people that are uh, long. And this is one of the reasons why you need to spread your money and spread your capital and uh, diversify. So there's been a lot of news regarding this stock here. Um, when we start looking at uh, some of these things, um, you can see uh, why is Foot Locker down today? Well, more sellers than buyers. That's pretty much a simple point. Uh, one of the things that caught my eye real quickly is uh, right here when uh, they suspend dividend here. Again, I didn't look at the uh, full report or anything uh, because at the end of the day it just matters about how you spread money because if I put you know 99% of my capital in Foot Locker and then it's down yeah that's a problem whereas if I only put let's say you got ten thousand dollars you only put 500 bucks in then uh, you should be just fine but um, the big issue here is uh, when we look at it um, if they're looking to suspend a dividend now um, the company said it's pausing its quarterly cash dividend beyond recently approved October payout to conserve cash for an investment. Ooh, so this is a big uh, issue for a lot of people that are long investors, which most people are. They buy the stock, they hold it, they try to get a dividend. So that's a little bit of a um, of an issue here. And uh, that means people are saying, ooh, it's not a great dividend because in the past, uh, stocks that do poorly usually pay a higher dividend. Stocks that increase and appreciate, they usually don't pay uh, a, a big dividend dividend uh, simply because the stock price is appreciating, right? So uh, when they start looking at pausing that dividend, um, that can be a bit of a issue. This is similar to how uh, certain stocks like uh, Verizon uh, dividend when you start looking at these types of stocks that are paying out a dividend, uh, you got a yield of 7.88. Whereas when you look at uh, Apple dividend, uh, it's completely different. It's only 0.53 annual dividend. So, um, and then Nvidia dividend, well, I don't think it's anything. Oh, okay, they do, uh, 0 0.034. So you can see as the stocks appreciate a lot more, um, the stock price is making up for the dividend. So who cares? But when you look at, um, you know, Foot Locker dividend, let's see if they changed it or updated. Oh, see, it's a 10%. So you're making 10% on your money on the dividend. But now if they're pausing it, that's a big issue and a bit of a problem. So this is where you're saying, hmm, this really sucks. And uh, there's a ton of huge selling pressure, which is not good uh, for uh, for this uh, for the stock. So um, if you look at the uh, quarterly financials here, again, a lot of red, a lot of problems. And I think some of this, uh, when you start looking at shoes, it's kind of like the phones back in the day. So, you know, when you get the phones, uh, usually now I don't actually buy the newest phone. Uh, in the past, when you'd look at phones, and let's just look at uh, Pixel uh, phone uh, lineup. Uh, in the past, what happened was the phones um, were very different from when you look at, let's say, the Google Pixel 2 to 3 to 4 to 5. Um, the first few were quite a bit different. Now I find going with a Pixel 5 versus 6 versus 7, it's not a big deal for me. I'm not an Apple person either uh, because I think the products are expensive from the value and everything's locked in. So you can't really do much with them. Uh, Apple phone lineup and uh, history. Uh, but I did used to have a couple of um, Apple iPhones. And the when you look at the evolution of these phones, I had one of these right down here, like 3G, 3GS, uh, something like that. Um, and I used it for a little while, but then by the time here, they were quite different, a bit different. Uh, but then at this point, sometime the Pixel phones started coming out and I looked at those and they were just more, much more friendly for me. But the phone differences back here were quite significant. Now I find the phone differences is not a big deal. Uh, so I can get an older phone and it works just fine. It's kind of like getting an older car uh, versus a newer car. If the mileage is all the same, uh, the only difference is it's a newer, um, you know, if, if the quality is still the same, again, I find things in the past were built actually better. Um, so what am I really paying for? Uh, instead of a CD player, I got a DVD player in the back. Uh, in, you know, I got maybe a, now some of the cars, of course, autonomous driving. Uh, but beyond that, okay, I got a USB plug instead of a, just a, a, a lighter plug jack. So big deal. Am I going to pay $10,000 for that? No. Um, but again, autonomous driving, those kinds of things. Yeah, a little bit of features. But again, 
are you, is it worth the cost? So when I start looking at something like this with Foot Locker, what I'm saying is, is when we look at um, shoes, there's a bunch of companies out there now doing discount shoes as well, uh, like Carnival Shoes. And when we start looking at these, uh, there's um, it's quite a good deal, I find. And same with the shoe uh, shoes uh, in production. Like for example, Nike, I, I personally don't like wearing Nike shoes. That's not my, uh, cup of tea. Um, I like more like of an Adidas type fashion sneakers. Um, in fact, right now I got some Perry Ellis on, um, it's just simple, you know, or something a little comfortable. Uh, but I don't, I don't really care for stuff like, uh, the Nike. So when we look at here, Nike also, uh, going down quite a bit recently, but when we look at these shoe companies, and you start pulling up, I find you can get some good deals on some of those uh, shoes. Let's take a look at some men's. <laughs> I know we're getting outside the scope here. Uh, but um, as we're looking at, let's say, these new arrivals, um, you know, and you start looking at shoes, you know, you don't have to spend a fortune on shoes these days. Now, could you spend $300? Sure. $500? Sure. Uh, but do you need to? I think that's a personal choice. If you're going into work and that kind of thing. But I don't think the quality difference will be that much there. So in my case, I don't usually, you know, I don't usually spend a ton of money on, on shoes. I'd rather just get two pairs, one pair here, one pair there. And if it breaks, is it, am I going to really notice that that shoe had three months more longevity? No, I w wouldn't be able to, to tell. So, so when I start looking at these kinds of shoes, I'm like, oh, okay, these look good. Do they fit? Do they, you know, uh, feel good? That kind of stuff. And then, um, and then from there on, um, you know, it's like, okay, 64 bucks. Do they fit? I don't know. Uh, how do they feel? Um, are they going to rip? Um, <laughs> and that's pretty much it for me. Like uh, comfort is, is, is key. I don't really care anymore about <laughs> what other people think. So when I look at these shoes, so when I'm, when I'm starting to look at Nike and I'm starting to look at Foot Locker here, uh, these stocks are, are down quite a bit. And looking at um, the Foot Locker, I know in the past they were a bunch, uh, quite a bit expensive on um, the Foot Locker uh, pricing. So if we pull it up on the website here, uh, just looking at the at the pricing here, um, let's see on the new arrivals. So you can see the difference here. We've got already one hundred twenty dollars, one hundred sixty dollars shoes, one hundred fifty dollars shoes. Eh, not my thing. White shoes, you know, they just get dirty quick. Um, Anyway, so you got these Jordans and 160, 125. So I think consumers are probably a, a little bit more conscious uh, with that. Whereas when you look at uh, Shoe Carnival, um, uh, let's go to the Bradenton store. <laughs> That's where I used to live. Let's check it out. Cortez Plaza, baby. All right. So over here, um, I think I bought some shoes from here. So anyway, uh, when we look at these... Um, shoes and we check them out i'm going with men's let's say men's uh let's say walking and hiking shoes okay so here i've got shoes for 79 bucks oh 39 man look at this this is a deal hopefully they're comfortable fila i don't wear feel in a while but hey why not okay cool um they look good are they comfortable that's the big question for me are they comfortable look good enough for me boom done get a couple one pair there one pair there one pair there you know so you get one of those Maybe you get another pair somewhere else, but look, you know, for 70 bucks, you can get yourself some shoes. Um, and you know, they're price averaging. Yeah. Between like 60 to 75 bucks. Here, here's, here's a pair 60. I'm just checking some stuff out. 64. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Um, style wise, that's a personal choice here. As I'm looking for it, the inventory overall it jumps about 30%. So with the consumer being a probably a little bit more cost conscious now, Holy smokes, Crocs are 75 bucks. <laughs> I thought they're like plastic and stuff. Anyway, um, well, look at these, $185 for Nikes. Wow, okay. Um, good for them. I mean, if they can sell them. I, again, I, I find the Nike fit just doesn't fit my my uh, feet as well. Uh, I don't know. It just does, doesn't work for me. But anyway, point being here is we got about $100, $145, some in the 60 $60 for slippers. Um and uh, the pricing's higher. So as I look into a stock like this and we look into the monthly, um, you can see this is pulling back here in the 15. Now this stock in the past was around five bucks. And I think this stock could get down into this $5 range if you still get more of a panic and 
a problem within that industry. So uh, right now, yeah, there's going to be a lot of sadness um, crying uh, if you're long on this stock. Um, and it could get down into those levels until maybe there's some changes in there. Because right now they're targeting uh, a more... Uh, call it a, a more wealthier consumer, but the products they have are not necessarily like a $400 shoe. Because if I'm looking for uh, going into the office, um, let's say, uh, yeah, I might spend three to $700 on a shoe. Yeah, it looks good. It's stylish, but it's not a sneaker. Like I'm spending for a sneaker now, I'm spending like $150. And for me, I'm like, um, oh, do I really want that? Like, no, it's, it's, I'm, I'm out there, you know, either running around or, or that kind of thing. Maybe if you're playing basketball, maybe those kinds of things for performance, but is it going to really improve your basketball game? I don't know that much, but the marketing side of it, I could see that point of it, but still it's, then why wouldn't you just go direct to like a Nike outlet uh, store or something like that? So anyway, this is where the trouble lies with um, this and I think you're going to get into some trouble. I think you got some spots around the nine bucks uh, level that you could take a look at. But five is kind of the line in the sand. If you're below that, you're going to get into some trouble. Nine is, hey, you better hold there too. Um, that's also another spot to watch. 15 right now, you're pulling back. It's not too crazy, but you did break this level right there which was in the past in 2001. I know that's kind of far away, but people do watch that. That's $18, it's broken that. So now we're into this $15 range and I think you got about 11 to 10 is where your next stop is. And you've got a lot of built up volume here on the sell side pressure. Now, could you get a little bit of a bounce here short term? Sure, uh, because what you were doing, the reason I say short term, you've got an A to B, B to C, C to D pattern that's being completed. So what you typically will see is you will see a slight uh, pop and then you might see a further rejection down into the 10. That's kind of uh, normal uh, for these types of uh, movements because they don't go straight down in the same way that you had this move down here, pop, and now you had this, this move here or this move down, a little pop, and then another move down. So this is why I say, hey, you might get this move down, now you might get a pop and then you get a f further continuation because the volume is still there and that's not good. So what you're doing is you're really looking at how that volume is and um, how how it's moving, how it's behaving. So in either case, I would be a little bit more careful in this stock. Um, there's a lot of selling pressure in there and um, it definitely can be a, a problem if you're long. So I uh, hope this helps, gives you some, some ideas and insights. Uh, when we look at just kind of the other uh, stocks, look at the ones that are doing well. I mean, come on, uh, Ross stores, you're up four bucks. Um, discount discount retailer right tj maxx uh, also great place you could also buy shoes there too also doing really well stock price um gap also a cheap company i mean this one's up right now but it's also struggled a bit but anf did really well up nine bucks for their earnings so point being is there's retailers that are doing well um but Foot Locker is not one of them. So uh, it's struggling. And I think you will see some trouble there ahead. Anyways, um, if you're interested in learning options, how to trade some of these things rather than being in the stocks, check out our website, tradersfly.com. You can also look at criticalcharts.com where we post a lot of uh, other great uh, material and uh, um, also the uh, transcripts. Um, and if you like to read the articles, uh, on that website. So check out criticalcharts.com. Other than that, thanks for joining me. Check out the website. There's a lot of links down below and I will see you in the next video uh, segment update and news report. Thanks. Take care.